22. My name is Laura. I am once again on the irs.gov website. And the reason I'm here this time is I thought I would do some more research on self-employment. Only this time I want to look up starting your own business. So let's put up here in the search bar, start a business, right? Now when you type that in up there, you're going to sort by relevant is a good one. If you would like, you can sort by date if you want. You know, these are the options that are here. This is by date. Most recent, I guess, right? They've had a lot of changes, you know, the three different major congressional uh, law bills, you know, going into effect over the last two years. So there are thousands of pages in all those laws. So you might want to check out the irs.gov website to find out if there is something in there that relates to your situation. So let's start a new business. Let's see. Let's see. Let's say that you're going to be getting a good refund, you know, and you already know kind of what you're going to be receiving. And you're like, well, you know what? Maybe in 2022, I want to start a new business. Well, here's the things you need to think about. What state is your domicile state? What state do you live in? What state is your residential state? And if you want to look up domicile, you can look up domicile, D-O-M-I-L-E, domicile state, thanks to 9-11 uh, and the Patriot Act. We now have to have a domicile state. So your domicile state has secretary of state for that state that will list business requirements such as business license and so forth like that and you're going to want to research how that's important for you based on what your domicile state is now some people they go and you know they buy a uh, they purchase a uh, state, not a state, they purchased a business name in another state, like Delaware, you hear a lot about that. And then, you know, they live in a different state. Well, that's called, oh, when you go to your secretary of state, you're registering a foreign state in that state. So the state that it's registered in is not the state you live in but but you have to tell the state you live in that that's that you own that company and that you're doing business out of the state that you live in but you're going to have to talk to a lawyer and you're going to have to talk to an accountant to figure all that out in your situation to be absolutely sure you have everything all set up correctly so let's say we you got that all together and then you decided okay now i know where my my uh, company is registered i have my company's existence and now i want to start a business well let's look in here starting a business checklist for starting a business and this is the federal checklist for all 50 states. The checklist below provides the basic steps you should follow to start a business. This list should not be construed as all inclusive. Mm. Other steps may be appropriate for your specific type of business. Information about specific industries can be found at, and we will look at that in a minute, Industries Professions webpage. 
Each state, like I was saying, has additional requirements for starting and operating a business. Starting a business has to do with the business name and the address of the business uh, where that business is registered. Like I say, it could be registered in Delaware, and then you could live in another state, and that would be the operating a business part. People do that when they have, some people do that, I know from where I live right now, is the person who owns the building lives in another state, so they went through a registrar because they operate in this state. The business they have to have a, a business name in order to own the apartment is what they're doing and then they live in another state so they're operating their business in a different state it just that's just how it works and all the 50 states have some kind of laws and rules and regulations between one state and another as to where you live and where the business is operating and then where you registered your business that's why you have to be very, very, very careful. And you need to understand all these rules and regulations when you want to just have any site, such as a Shopify site. And you want to sell print-on-demand products that you want to list on your website. It's important to understand all of these rules and regulations and stuff in your situation. Just so you know that. All right, each state has additional requirements. Please, uh, for information regarding state level requirements for starting a business, please refer to your state's website. We will look at that in a moment for an example. Refer, re, yeah, refer also to the Small Business Administration. So the SBA is gonna have some information to help people when they want to start a business. Now, let's say you have your business name registered. The next step, <clears throat> after you have that all squared away with a lawyer and an accountant, and you have that existing, the next thing you want to do, actually that's the lawyer section. So the next part is to apply for your employee identification number. So you, per, you have a personal number, which is a social security number, and that social security number is registered with the IRS. And then when you send in your tax returns with your social security number on it, then it connects you to the tax return that connects the money that will be returned to you, and it connects to the other people who reported that they paid money to you, an employer or an organization of some sort, an app, or whoever it was that paid you, they report your social security number to the IRS that they paid you. So that would be a social security number connected to your name. This one is an EIN number, which is the same thing only for a business. So instead of a social security number, the business has an EIN number, and then there are a lot of tax rules and laws that relate to how they can use their EIN number and so forth like that. And then they have select a business structure, choose a tax year. If you have employees, have them fill out an I-9 form and a W-4, pay your business taxes. These are the selections available. So, Let's start at the top one. Oh, you have online tax calendar starting a business in the SBA. And then over here, all kinds of information that relates to businesses and self-employed. They kind of combine them together. This whole format's nice and simple. Oops. And it has a hover available with Java on the top. Okay, so. Industries and professions, tax centers. Okay, click. We got all kinds of them. Now, if you look over here in this area, right where this 
scroll bar is, the scroll bar will tell you how long the web or how long the web page is. So this is pretty large scroll bar, so it's not that long. It goes down right there, all the way down, has up some other information. So you know that there's not really that long of a list, right? And we go. But these are all the sections for the federal level. You would choose one of these sections to relate to your, see this one says real estate tax center. That's when you own real estate as an investment and then you rent it out. But again, talk to your lawyer. That's just a section there that people might talk about. The marijuana, look, they added this in here. Guidance for taxpayers in the marijuana industry. I want to go look. <laughs> they have a tax code and the whole bit. Tax guide for small business, cash payment options, large cash amount, estimated payments, record keeping. Wow, look at all this. Marijuana industry, FAQ. Hmm. All right, well, okay, we're going to go back. That's not what we were looking for. We are looking for, let's say... Hmm, I'm going to go in here, Gig Eco Economy Tax Center. Now, most of us might go in here because we want to do something that would relate to selling from a website. Let's say we want to stay at home and do our own sell from a website. If you use one of the many online platforms available to rent a spare room, provide car rides, or to connect and provide a number of other goods or services, you're involved in what is some, sometimes called the gig or sharing economy. Although this is a developing area, uh, it will always be a developing area of the economy. There are tax implications for the company ooh, excuse me, that provide the services and the individuals who perform the services. So let's click on that. So, and then... This person right here explains a little bit about that. The gig economy, also called sharing economy or access economy, is activity where people earn income providing on-demand work, on-demand services, on-demand goods. Often it's through a digital platform like an app or website. There again, right there, uh, print on demand. So let's say we want to put a Shopify store up. Then we have to uh, call it a gig economy, perhaps. We're, we're selling something on a website. And we're responsible for our own taxes. Okay, gig economy income is taxable. Well, yes, of course it is. So, you must report income earned from the gig economy on a tax return, even if the income is from part-time, temporary, or side work. Uh, not reported on an information return form, like a Form 1099-K or miscellaneous W-2 or other income statement, and paid in any form, including cash, proxy, goods, or virtual currency. Oh! What? They're going to say if you're paid through virtual currency, you have to report it as income. How do you report virtual currency as income? How do they tax virtual currency? That I want to know. <laughs> mm, I wonder about that. What to do with gig workers, digital platforms, and businesses? Let's go over here, manage taxes for a digital platform. Wait, let's look down here first. We will go back up there in a minute. What is gig work? Gig work is certainly activity, certain activity you do to earn income, often through an app or website, digital platform like 
drive a car for booked rides or deliveries, rent out property or part of it, run errands or complete tasks, sell goods online. They're trying to think of everything, you know. We got to tax them if they do this. Rent equipment, provide creative or professional services, provide other temporary on-demand or freelance work. Note, this list does not include all types of gig work. Of course, because there's a million different things you could be doing uh, to provide service to somebody. Babysitting, that's always existed before, long before the internet. You know, do you see that listed here? Hmm. Babysitting is the same thing as driving somebody somewhere or going to pick up somebody's food and delivering it to them. You're doing a service for another person. Hmm. It's not your kid, right? You're doing a service for someone else. That's, and that's not even listed. Hmm. What are digital platforms? Digital platforms are businesses that match workers, services, or goods with customers via apps or websites. This includes businesses that provide access to ride-sharing services, delivery services, crafts, and homemade item marketplaces, on-demand labor and repair services, property and space rentals. So this right here, <laughs> they're talking about Etsy and Redbubble, but... They're also talking about Shopify stores and your own website that sells items. So either way, any anything that you're selling, you have to um, to the tax, you know, claim it as income. That's why if you have a company and you have a company structure, you know, then you can use the EIN number to charge sales tax if you're supposed to collect sales tax. It's very, very important. That's why you have to study all of this before you do it. Study what you need to know, talk to a lawyer, and make sure it's all set up the right way. It's not as easy as what people say it is online, especially, especially people who are in a different country who don't know the laws in our own in uh, America, and um, and there are some very good people online who are advertising uh, how much money they're making or what their store looks like or how easy it is to use print on demand and their platforms and stuff. But what they don't know is all the extra money you have to use in America to to be able to sell all that stuff, um, to set up your business and pay for insurance and all that stuff. Sometimes you have to pay business insurance, workers' compensation, um, all kinds of stuff. There's a million different rules. So make sure you check with your secretary of state. Talk to a lawyer who, uh, make sure you find the right lawyer that has to do with small businesses or online businesses to help you make sure your business structure is set up correctly. Okay, understanding the gig economy. There's a webinar here. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to look at digital platforms first. I want to look at this. What to do? Understand your tax obligation if you operate a digital platform, marketplace, or business. In the gig economy, you must correctly classify workers and meet requirements for information reporting and tax withholding, filing, and depositing. You may also want to consider helping your workers meet their tax obligations. What to do? Here's how to manage taxes for a digital platform. Classify workers. It is critical that business owners correctly determine whether the individual providing services is an employee or independent contractor. For most types of workers, the common law rules for worker classification apply. And we're going to just one click here. And down 
here. Well, wait, before we get there, okay. Generally, you must withhold and pay income taxes, social security taxes, and Medicare taxes, as well as pay unemployment tax on wages paid to an employee. You do not generally have to withhold or pay any taxes on payments to independent contractors. That's what it says at the IRS Checkoff website. Make sure you check with your accountant. So, if the person's an independent contractor or in business for yourself. So, if you have your Shopify store and you created a business name and use that business name with its own EIN number and its own checking account that's connected to the EIN number, then you work for that business. And you can set yourself up to be an employee or an independent contractor as long as it's structured correctly through the, now that part of it is through the accountant. The accountant will explain that. Also, the, the, between the lawyer and the accountant, there's also tax implications on what type of business you have, whether it's a S Corp or a C Corp or LLC. So your lawyer um, and your accountant together will have to help you with that structure. So it depends on how you set up the business, where, who you want to uh, provide the service or products to, and so forth. So you make sure you check all that out. And if you qualify in this case, then this is an area that you would want to research and understand. No matter what the lawyer or accountant tells you, you personally should want to understand your own business and where you fit in. Oops. Uh-oh. Okay. And where you fit in so that when they do the work for you, that when you review the work that they did for you, you need to review it and make sure you know that it's done correctly. Because you are ultimately responsible. Okay? Uh, common law rules. Determining whether the individual provides services or employees or independent contractors. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to click on all of them right now. I'm sorry. Because... Um, I want to go through this whole page here. Um, it It is important for you to go through this page yourself and see what fits in where. Type of relationship. Are there written contracts or employee type benefits? That's usually an employee. Financial. Are the business aspects of the worker's job controlled by the payer? Uh, worker is paid whether it's regularly negotiable by a choice of supplier. Oh, yeah, whether you want the person to uh, supply their own tools or whether you supply them. Does the company control or have the right to determine what the worker does? Well, that would be either job behavioral, but anyways, it's real important to read through all of these if you want to start a business and decide what best fits your style. Uh, this one, SS8. Let's take a look at that real quick. Determination of worker status for purpose of federal employment taxes. Uh-huh. The name of the company, the worker name, the name of the company or address, the worker address, daytime phone number, alternate telephone number. Wow. Okay. So that's the social security number of the worker. That's the EIN number of the company. All right. So, oh, look at this. Okay, this form is being completed by the chapter one. For services performed this date to this date, explain your reason for filing this form. 
For example, you received a bill from the IRS. Do you believe you erroneously received a claim for 1099 or W-2? You are unable to get workers' compensation benefits or you are you were audited or are being audited by the IRS. Ah! <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Total number of workers who perform or are performing the same or similar services. How did the worker obtain the job? Okay, attach copies of all supporting documents, for example. Okay, now if I click over here, go to the next page. Wow. And this is very good to read and fill out for yourself. I would say, you know, if you don't go to college and you say, well, I want to start a business instead of going to college, guess what? This is like a college course right here. You have to know this stuff. You have to understand it. Okay? Don't just look at YouTube channels and say, oh, I can just start a business. No. Make sure you understand the details behind it, all the responsibilities, and this type of information. I would go through every single line of this if I owned a company. At this time, I don't, but <clears throat> I will. And when I do, I'm going to fill this whole thing out and see how much I understand it so that if it was to come around, then I'd already know what it was. Employment tax obligation. See? Forms and associated information for independent contractors. 1099 NEC. So if you worked a job all year where you think you didn't receive a 1099 and you uh, provided a W-9 for them, rather. Um, yeah, W-9. Sorry, W-9. So if you receive, if you sent them a W-9, then you're going to receive this probably. Beginning with tax year 2020. Oh, here we go. See, this is new right here. You must use Form 1099-NEC, Non-Employment Compensation, to report payments and non-employment compensation. Previously reported in Box 7 of 1099 Miscellaneous. I'm familiar with this one. So this is new. This is new right here. That's why you should check this and read this stuff. If I click on this, I wish I could look at the form. That's what I want to look at. Current form. There it is. Okay. See? Brand new. Brand new information. And this is what it looks like. Wow. Okay. It looks the same as the other one as far as I know. So this is the form that the company who's paying you is going to send you. This is what you will receive for to, rec to use for your taxes, to file your taxes. So if you work for DoorDash and Uber and Lyft and, you know, Grubhub and had an Airbnb and a Shopify store, you're going to receive a few of these. <laughs> One from each source. Whatever name was on the pay stub or the bank statement of where you received your money should be the name up here, or wait, yeah, up here, the payer's name, street, and all that. All of that should be right there, and your name would be down here. You're the recipient. You received the pay. This is who paid you, okay? And they have a number here. Non-employment compensation, how much, payer, made direct 
sales totaling 5000 or more of consumer products or recipient for resale. That's interesting. Okay. 5000 huh? Uh, copy one. Copy A for IRS. Copy one for state. Copy B for recipient. Okay, here we go. Box two is check consumer products totaling 5,000 or more were sold to you for resale on a buy, sell, a deposit, commission, or other basis. Generally report any income from your sale of these products on Schedule C. Okay. So Schedule C would be important for you to look up when you relate to doing gig work. Let's look down here a minute. And this is copy two for the state income tax. Copy two for KR, which is the one that's KEU. And then instruction to KR. Current instructions for Form 1099 Miscellaneous and NEC. Wow. Okay. So this is new for the for the last, I don't know, year or two. No, it said 2020 on up. So last year was the first year. This is the second year. So it's important to read all this stuff. And and you wouldn't know this unless you snooped around this website you know and you oh okay then you learn more about it copy a of this form is provided for informational purposes copy a appears in red similar to the official irs form the official printed version of copy a of this irs form is scannable but the online version of it printed from this website is not. <laughs> Do not print and file copy A downloaded from this website. A penalty may be imposed for filing with the IRS. Information returned forms that can't be scanned. Oh. See part O in the current general instructions for certain information returned. Uh -huh. For more information about penalties. My goodness. Okay. Please note that copy B and other copies of this form, which appear in black, may be downloaded and printed and used to satisfy the requirement to provide the information to the recipient. So it's very, very important. I don't think I'm, I'm curious. Oh, a lot of information here. <laughs> but if you want to start a business, it's important to know this stuff. Even if you're not going to be the one filling them out, when the accountant or the lawyer hand you this information, then you can relate to what they're talking to talking about rather you can relate to them to what you know they give you to what they're talking about so that way you can have an intellectual conversation with them and then also it makes it a lot easier for them so that their job is more um, taken care of a lot more efficiently if you know what's going on, it's a lot better for you to know. They don't have time to teach you all about the laws and all about accounting. They need you to provide the information that the law provides them to have in order to represent you correctly within the laws. Okay, filing electronically. Now here... 
we will have oops that went down thank you um they're gonna have information here about that look at this something new effective january 1 2022 the good not released file status and the good released file status will be combined so users will only see a good status change. This will improve system response time and streamline customer file status reporting. Hmm. I didn't know about that. <laughs> oh, a new fire account ID. User ID format will be required. Then they have this. There we go. Then they third. More information there. It's already past that now. What is an information return? Information returns are records other than tax returns that the IRS requires to document certain financial transactions. There we go. Lots of other returns and forms and lots of cool stuff here. <laughs> and then you have to log into it. So there you go. So a lot more information. So it's real important. What I wish they would have would, would say, um, I wish they would have menu items that stated the year as to when within the last three years because you're allowed to file up to three years so within three years new laws a section of new laws that would say this section or in 2022 these are the new laws so you can go here and then have a link to go there and you'd be able to see it right away they don't have it that way here in here you have to read through everything in order to find it <laughs> like you wouldn't know this unless you found this page you know so with that said it's very important to do research when you plan on doing anything that may affect taxes of any kind okay so we're going to go back I've made this a little long already. I think I helped. I hope I helped enough to get you started. Oh, all right. We just started with classify workers. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to click these open. Report payments. Going to have sections on that. File and tax. File and pay taxes. And then help workers meet their up. So, all of this is important to read and understand if you want to start your own business in 2022, okay? And there's, there's so much information available. Now, what I'm able to do is help you find the information that you need. If you wanted me to do a type of service, then of course I would have to charge for a service that would relate to whatever the information is that you want. The only thing I am able to do is research and provide information to you that you need for not, I don't know if I can, you know, find everything, but in general guide you in the right direction to find some of the information that you need. Sometimes I would not be able to do that because I would not be able to relate to you what you need. And then that way you would, in those cases, you'd have to, you know, see someone else. But I'm a very good researcher and can help in that way most of the time. The information in and of itself is something you have to relate to and you have to read it no matter who provides it to you 
so that you know what's going on in order to do what you want to do. If you don't want to do any of that at all, then it's best for you to let the employer do that, and then you be an employee, and they do all of that work. Somebody does all of that work, whether it's you or the employer, one or the other. So there you go. Um, I am going to cut this video off now and ask if you'd like to please subscribe. It would be very helpful for other people to find the video and help them. And or if you share, that would be helpful. Share on Twitter or Facebook. That would be real helpful. Maybe you'd be able to help in someone else. And uh, if you click on the like button, that would be helpful as well. All of those things help support the channel so that more people can find the information to help them as they uh, venture into a new business, perhaps, in 2022. Good luck to you. Be safe. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Laura out. Bye.